Why, hello there, everyone. I'm Laxo, aka the Kumo Sensei. Mina san, ohayo gozaimasu. And today, we're going to be rehousing the Peace Lutheria Shriata Slings. And, as stated before as last time, these guys were healthy and plump. And now, they all have molted into second in star. So, we're finally separating all of these babies. And do not worry, I am going to tell you the final count towards the end of the video. So, stick around and watch as I rehouse all of these little guys. So now let us get into it. So when it comes to these type of videos, rehousing baby tarantulas, these are actually the hardest videos to record because baby tarantulas will run everywhere if you're not careful. So yeah, I gotta take my time and slowly hurt them. Like you're hurting sheep. <laughs> it's kind of like that, which is very difficult because tarantulas, they tend to run everywhere if you don't get things under control. So as you may have noticed, the video is sped up because this takes a very long time. This is essentially one of the longest processes of, you know, tarantula breeding, other than feeding all of the babies once they're separated into their own individual enclosures. So as stated, some of the baby tarantulas ran off during this rehousing, which I gotta catch them. And don't worry, none of them got away. I caught them all. And yeah, I cut that part out so you guys don't see that because it's kind of embarrassing, so. <laughs> but my warning to any tarantula breeder or any new tarantula breeder coming in is that be prepared and be careful in case baby tarantulas run off when you're rehousing them from the incubator. Now, when it comes to how many I'm keeping in terms of separating all these babies, Honestly, I may just keep around five of these little guys and just sell the rest away or try to find them new homes because I already have a lot of females and I already have some males already of the species, which is how easily I got this breeding project going because I produced this species a very long time ago. And what I did was when I produced offspring of this species a very long time ago, I traded some for somebody else's of the same species. So essentially, I got new bloodlines in. And that's how I got this breeding project going. So for this time around, I don't plan on keeping many of these little guys. So I think five would do just fine for me. And then the rest will be wholesaled off to another breeder or another retailer or something of the sorts. And then some of them will be traded in for different bloodlines of the same species. So that way they don't inbreed and cause, uh, you know, lack of genetics, quote unquote. But anyhow, though... Now, later on, we gotta feed these guys, which I will not feed on video because honestly, that part is kind of boring. And a lot of people do wonder how do I feed baby tarantula slings. And what I do is I just get some mealworms, I cut them up to appropriate sizes, I put them into the enclosure, and then I just let the baby sling just pretty much scavenge it and eat it. That's typically how I do it and how some tarantula breeders do it. And it's also the most cost effective way. So if you're willing, to save money or if you want to save money the way i do it is pretty much the most efficient way of going at it now if you have a lot of money to spend and you're pretty much a wealthy person quote unquote you can pretty much buy small pinhead crickets and just feed them off that way which pretty much adds up over time so i just really just go with mealworms because whatever mealworms you don't end up using you could just put it in the fridge and then they pretty much just go dormant because of the cold temperatures being put in the fridge and then when you need to use them again, just take them out and keep them pretty warm and then they'll become active again. Then you can chop them up and feed them with your slings. And trust me, it is very cost effective and you're going to be saving yourself a lot of money. You'll thank me later. <laughs> I mean, unless you want to buy a bunch of crickets like every single week now and then, which adds up so fast in terms of how much it costs to feed these little guys. So mealworms is my choice to go to if you're trying to save money. And I know a lot of tarantula beaters, especially those that are pretty much reputable or those that have a lot of money to spend, they buy crickets. But what us private breeders do, we just mainly go with the mealworms because it works better in terms of saving money for us. Now, I did make a video a very, very long time ago on how I feed baby tarantulas. And maybe for next week, I'll do an updated version with better video quality, quote unquote. It's still the same method from last time, but maybe just an updated version and with commentary this time around so I can explain it better, I guess. But I don't know. It's honestly not a very... uh enjoyable video is more so of an informative video on how to save money on how tarantula breeders actually feed uh, baby tarantulas while saving money but mm, maybe maybe i can <laughs> maybe i can show you guys right and you may have noticed that i'm kind of on the fence when it comes to you know the how to do videos or how i do it as a tarantula breeder videos and the reason why is because people want it to be informative but also entertaining which is understandable, but at the same time, when it comes to tarantula work, 
it's kind of, <laughs> I don't want to say it's boring, but it's pretty much labor intensive. So it goes one way or the other. Now for me, I enjoy every single aspect of it, which is why I do it. But to the common folk or to new breeders, it looks kind of boring and it might actually deter people away. So honestly, trying to find the fine line between entertainment and uh, how to do, I guess, or showing you guys how to do things is very tricky. Now granted, I do provide commentary that is pretty much informative to some people. So hey, maybe maybe that's the key of entertainment, right? Just have fun and then <laughs> explain things informatively while showing you guys as well. But anyhow though, let us jump right back into this tarantula separation video. So after this, I'm very tired. As a matter of fact, I've been tired for like the past week or so because a lot of things have been happening in my personal life which is honestly kind of exciting and kind of uh, what's keeping me busy from doing more tarantula stuff. But don't worry everyone, I'm going to find time to create more videos because that's what I always do. I gotta grind. <laughs> Especially when it comes to this tarantula work and tarantula breeding in general. It's very time consuming and it requires quite a bit of attention, especially when it comes to breeding. But once you have slings, it's pretty much down to the T for me. So. It gets easier now, but it's going to be more time consuming, especially feeding all of these little ones. <laughs> but I'll find them some new homes. So, this is pretty much the last one here. And the final count, allow me to tell you. So, the final count was 106 slings. And we have one extra enclosure that was not used. And now, the separation of these slings is done. And honestly, this one was kind of a rough one because these guys were so active <laughs> and a lot of these did ran out, which I cut that part out so you guys don't see me panic because my goodness, do they all run out at the same time. <laughs> but uh, let, let us call this one a video for now. So without further ado, thanks for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and subscribe and stay updated to whenever I upload here on the channel. I upload every single Friday, so please feel free to do so and stick around and also Follow me on my social medias, such as my IG and my Twitter, and support me on Patreon. Links to everything is down below. And with that, stay lax, and laxo out, from the Kumo Sensei.